Hello, everyone. I'm Joe McGovern, awards reporter at The Wrap. We are so happy to have you here for our 2021 Awards and International Screening Series. Today, we are excited to bring you Willow, which is this year's North Macedonian entry for Best International Feature Film. We're going to show you the trailer for the film, and then we'll go right into a conversation with director Milcho Menchevsky and actress Sarah Klimaska. To our audience, please participate in the live chat of the stream, share your thoughts about the film, and do let us know where you're tuning in from. And before we introduce our guests, here is the trailer for Willow. Welcome back. It is my pleasure to introduce director Milcho Menchevsky and actress Sarah Klimaska. Hello, guys. Hello there. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having us. Thank you for being here. Tell us where you're both um, coming from right now. Um, I'm in New York. And I'm in Skopje in Macedonia. Oh, wonderful. Well, uh, and I'm, it's nice that your film actually did premiere at festivals um, about a year, a little more than a year ago, back when there were real life in-person film festivals. So you got to have that experience, but um, we're very happy to have you here now virtually to talk about this remarkable film. Um, Milcho, I, you know, um, I was looking back through your credits, you, and uh, you did 10 years ago make a film called Mothers. Right. Which could have been the title of this film uh, in a way, but, uh, and we will, we'll talk about the title later, but where did, um, where did this idea first first come from? This uh, this story about um, sort of uh, trust and love and women um, as it relates to uh, childbearing. Um, I mean, motherhood or parenthood is 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 an interesting place. It's it's a place where so many issues uh, clash and overlap and work off of each other. Um, it's obviously society's, it's, it's, it's the individual's need to, to have children, but it's also society's need to, uh, to continue the, the human race or, or to have more members, to create more members of society, which then develops into issues of control, who makes, who makes those decisions, uh, individual liberty, it's it's a fight for one's one's own uh, ability to make decisions and uh, to control their own body and their own destiny, vis-a-vis -vis what society needs or what uh, family needs, but also loyalty and love. So, knowing all of this, it was it was a fertile ground for for a drama, 
to take place. Um, and it's not something that I did on purpose. It's not like I, uh, I say, okay, like I have an agenda. This is what the next film is going to be about. Um, it always starts with uh, just a general embryo of a plot and a feeling. And then I let the story take me wherever it wants to go. But looking back, I realized that there's mothers. Uh, there was a, a, a pregnant protagonist in Before the Rain, mm. another one in, in Dust. And so somehow um, all these mothers and babies find me. You also favor a, a format um, in your career, You've done it before, of a, of a sort of a triptych, telling, telling three stories that are um, in conversation with each other. Uh, and in this case, the film begins with the story that, that Sarah is the star of um, in medieval times. I don't know how long, maybe a couple hundred years ago. Um, yeah, we, we decided it's probably the 16th century, but um, things didn't look different and life was not very different, even if it were the 10th century, say, in the Macedonian mountains. So... Uh, for technical reasons, we decided to make it 16th century, but for all practical reasons, it could have been any time in, in medieval times. Right, it's not specified. Um, and then the right. stories uh, number two and three are both set in contemporary Macedonia. So, but because Sarah is, uh, is here with us and she's the star of this, this extraordinary first um, segment, which is about a half hour long, um, I'd like to ask uh, Sarah, did... Did you have access to the full scope of the project when Milcho came to you with um, with this offer? Well, um, uh, in the beginning, um, it was everything very challenging for me. Uh, even Milcho asking me to be part of this movie it was uh, kind of surreal and, and crazy, and I really loved the script. So, um, I don't know, even, it was even more challenging to be part of these medieval times, uh, which are very, um, uh, in a, it's a historical part, which is not very uh, often in Macedonia, uh, put in a movie, uh, no one ever actually did it until now. So I had no references uh, whatsoever. So we did a lot of research about it. Uh, we had also a professor, Ethologist who was telling us um, many informations about the time. We read a lot of historical and anthropological parts that we did, but also we read a lot of text and poems and the songs, which for me was the most helpful, what well, most helpful, because kind of gave me the the feeling or the atmosphere of, of, of that time. So in order to do it as much as authentic it, uh, and accurate. Talk, can you talk about the, the actual filming of it um, uh, with, with your other actors? Um, um, I had the opportunity to be uh, for the first time on film with my colleague from uh, my faculty days. We were in the same class and we got the, the lead, both of us, in the first part. So that made me... Um, uh, it was a safer place with both of us because we already knew each other. We already worked. Uh, we were on stage before, so that helped me a lot. And uh, the locations that uh, um, in the locations that we were shooting the movie were awesome and very inspirational, very good. Even even being just on these kind of locations, um, you don't you don't need anything else. Just uh, uh, these locations are enough inspiring and I also mentioned I have to mention the costumes that were uh, very authentic original um, taking apart original costumes in uh, from Macedonian traditional clothes um, and the crew uh, that was international crew, and uh, um, I have to admit that everybody was really working hard to make this movie and uh, really believed in it. Uh, so at the end, I think that this resulted with the, the thing that we—I mean, the movie that we did. <laughs> in, in that in that first segment, there is um, a, a sense of folklore 
um, mm -hmm. only because the, the, the young couple um, that you're a part of goes in the beginning of the, of the film to visit an old woman um, uh, with, a, with a wish that they could have a child and, and sort of mm -hmm. a bargain um, that mm -hmm. is with her. Uh, can, can you both, we saw her in the trailer just now, can you both talk about um, Radka? That performance, I mean, it, it's so uh, it's so scary, but it's so genuine. I feel like they just, where, where did they find this woman? And actually, she's, she's quite a, a legend um, as an actress. Can you talk about working with her or casting her at Milcho? Uh, go ahead, Sarah. I'll, I'll, I'll go second. I I had amazing experience with Radka. She's uh, we've seen Radka before in other uh, movies, and in, in, so they're kind of working together constantly. This is not the first time. So when Milcho told me that, and, mother. isn't she in Mother? She's in Mothers, and she's also uh, in uh, Dust, right? She's in one one scene in Dust, and she's in yes. Shadow. Well, so this is the yes. fourth time I'm, I'm, I, I work with her. Uh, so I was very happy to work with her because I know her from before. And um, I mean, that one woman is just very inspirational. She's now, of course, old and we had to be very careful uh, with everything. Uh, she She's done an amazing job being on uh, under uh, heavy rain and, and not even complaining about it. Um, so it was all in all amazing experience with her. Do you want to add yeah. to that, Nacho? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, Radke is fantastic. She's, um, uh, she's a retired stage actress and uh, she's not as old as she looks. Well, they seem to be quite. I, there's there's some makeup um, effects. It looks like um, a little story. bit, a little bit, not much, not much. I mean, she she just has this fantastic ex expressive wrinkled face, um, and underneath she's she's very modern and and, and very mm -hmm. very unlike uh, most of the characters she's played in my films. Uh, but yeah, and and and. Um, I remember on, on Mothers how she had this like long monologue and she would just do it without stopping. We didn't need a second take. Um, she's She was one of the few people that, um, one of the few actors uh, where I knew who was going to play that, that part before the film. Um, otherwise we just went through a long casting process. I would encourage everyone who's watching to do what I did and go look her up on Google. Um, Rada um, Radmanovic. Yeah, Radka Radmanovic. Yeah. You see that she, you're right, she's very modern looking. She doesn't, I mean, it's this, this character, and she has a really foul mouth in the film, which I, uh, which is, which are quite amusing and also pretty menacing. Um, it really, it's and, very and, re and realistic. It's, it's funny how, you know, you would find the the, the most out there things uh, in real life. So it's it's you know, as they say, uh, truth is is more interesting than fiction. Sometimes um, there's a there's a line in, in mothers. I keep coming back to it for some reason. In a line in mothers where um, the character that Radka plays when they ask her about uh, girls and virginity when she was young and, and what was the custom and what how what was what was the the, the expectation in society in the in the community uh, she goes oh child there's no end to dick <laughs> uh, and this is a line that was actually recorded in the field that uh, an actual grandmother gave to the uh, to the anthropologists when they were recording so a lot of what you see in in willow also comes from from our research from folklore from from the way uh, somebody in her position would 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 speak which is unexpected and that's our our prejudice it, right exactly and that we were the ones who invented vulgarity or or colorful language right. you know yeah. Um, so st sticking to that, to the, to the first segment, uh, Milcho um, and, and Sarah, tell us about uh, working with your cinematographer, with um, Tomas uh, Dobos? 
Probos. Probos. Yeah, he's he's a, a young Hungarian DP. Um, he's done a lot of photography as well as as film work. Hmm. And and I saw some of his Hungarian films. There was a a, a tiny tiny Hungarian film. I, I forget even the name. It was beautiful. It's like very it's very subtle, um, and it's it's both very classical in the way it looks in its in its beauty and contemporary which is something that that i'm drawn to um so then um it was all very very fast because we we needed to do a couple of days three days a three-day shoot in the summer to catch the harvest right before then breaking and shooting the rest of the film several months later so we had to to make a quick decision uh Tamash came to to Macedonia, we we uh, we bought a field and kept the wheat there for a little bit longer than than uh, than uh, was was expected. It would have been harvested, right. and, and we shot, and uh, it was it was beautiful. I mean, he he's he's a real master with light, obviously, um, and uh, it's the the way it is when you work with somebody for the first time and then there's an issue of language and all of that is it like puts you on your on your tiptoes and at the same time that feeds that gives you more creative energy so it was good it was great yeah uh well for me what i can say completely ob uh, objectively is that the photography is one of my favorite parts in the movie <laughs> Because I think that uh, really Tomas did an uh, amazing, amazing job there. Uh, he was very adaptable on situations that uh, he had to do because uh, in the same time uh, we were filming uh, quite uh, problematic destinations and locations that were mountains and rivers and, and stuff. So he was trying to um, find a solution for everything and to, to make a perfect shot. It's, uh, you know, these stories are connected by theme, but there's also a lot of subtle connections as well. The way that um, y your eyes uh, are shot um, and then also in the other, in the other uh, scenes, the other women, the, the, the other um, stories. Um, but, but Sarah, did, uh, how, how much access did you have to the, the, the two other pieces um, in in this film, in order to maybe give yourself some insight uh, to mm -hmm. the overall picture. Uh, yeah, of course. Well, when when we were working on the movie, of course, we were making rehearsals uh, rehearsals for the first part. But I tend to uh, tend to watch the movie as a whole. So um, I'm trying to create a role that will be connected with the others. So uh, I try to, in a way, to watch the. Um, the whole movie as an art piece and to try to fit in the, that story. Um, so, and uh, we shot the first part um, first. <laughs> so um, afterwards I went for several days, um, I visited them and I uh, watched what they, what they were doing, of course, because I was interested, but what we've done, we've done first. So I wasn't aware what, how new was going to pursue with the editing but uh anyway at, at the end i think that um there is a language uh that goes through whole uh, uh, story and connects uh, the three parts of of the movie milcha do you can you speak uh, sort of generally and also just about and about this film of course too but about your um your philosophy in terms of this type of storytelling, breaking, you know, uh, doing um, one story in three smaller stories, um, and uh, why that you seem to keep being drawn to that as a as a filmmaker and as an artist. It just happens. I mean, it's it's not something that I set out to do, uh, but I'm very happy that that it happens and that the films end up that way. I'm I'm uh, really interested in in. Uh, I mean, I guess it goes way back to to my uh, film school days in in Illinois, and uh, avant garde cinema and structuralism and and even conceptualism and like sort of picking apart the the work you're doing and 
in 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 visual arts in in painting uh, in with cubism uh, and same thing with literature um, so in a way you can tell a story uh, not in a way but I mean you can tell a story in in many different ways we are used to this linear old-fashioned way of beginning middle and end main characters supporting characters you end on a, on a certain note usually it's a happy ending the story is usually sort of rounded um, and and um, this is a way I guess of, of of exploring other ways of telling a story, finding other qualities and other nuances in in uh, what happens when the story is connected inside the viewer's head. But also, uh, it's a, I guess it's 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 a little bit of a rebellion against the, the diktat of the um, you know beginning, middle, and end of the 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 three act or five act structure the way the way hollywood and not only hollywood treats treats the story where it, it has to it has to be clear it has to resolve with a clear feeling actually i think that the dictatorship is more about the kind of feeling the viewer walks out of uh, out of the theater with rather than than whether the story is uh completed or not so it gives you an opportunity to to tell the story in different ways which then hopefully ideally uh creates a new quality uh a richer quality um it's it's as if you're telling a thriller every film is a thriller because you're always giving little pieces of information to to come together um so it's as if you're as if you're telling a thriller in a different way um and it also gives you an opportunity for um, for a lot of little things to become important. So how the theme runs through different environments, through different centuries, um, we experience that slightly differently than if it, if it were just one uh, homogenized story. So there's a lot of echoes and rhymes and contrasts between the three stories that was the case in before the rain and it's yeah. it's the case here you uh, albeit a little differently it's it's it is very exciting when um if you go into the film sort of blind when a supporting character in the second story becomes the lead character in the third story um it's it's very unexpected even though when it happened it, it sort of it really it's it's exciting when that kind of blossoms and that next step is taken Sarah, can you, Ben, obviously, you know, um, haven't been uh, aware before you worked uh, on this film with, uh, with Milcho's work. Can you speak to being an audience member and experiencing what he just described as um, that storytelling in which uh, the, the, the themes are sharpened by mm -hmm. a, a, a change of chapter? Yes. Uh, first of all, I have to tell you that um, first, when I read the script, I told I, I thought that it's written like that, <laughs> and then I asked Milcho, "It's like, are you going to edit it one in one?" And he said, "No." And then I was uh, completely confused. But then I realized how it works one with another. Um, I can tell you that um, in a way of of uh, format, uh, this this kind of this, this kind of film. Um, works for me but what this the audience is uh, experiencing i think is mostly connected with the story because it's beautifully uh told because um what what i experienced when we had premiered for the first time on Rome film festival i saw the added audience just clapping and not being able to take a breath um yeah we the, had a we had a a, a a five minute standing ovation after the, the Rome premiere, which was nice. Wonderful. It was very nice, but I, I thought that, I think that that was due to, uh, I mean, they were watching a film where the characters were fighting a destiny. I mean, um, in a way, when you see, the, when you watch the film, I think you cannot blame anybody. That's the most beautiful thing about the film. And, and when, when it finishes, uh, the audience is still completely confused with mixed emotions because because 
it's uh, sometimes we, we we cannot we are facing life and that's how the life is and we don't have a particular person to fight with but it's just uh, how the life goes on and how the destiny it is we're you know uh, unfortunately missing out nowadays on the experience of um, getting uh, audience feedback right after a screening in person but you did have that experience with uh, with Willow um, in Rome, uh, in Berlin. Um, what what was it like? What uh, because I am curious, you know, what women had to say, what men had to say um, to to both of you in terms of their feelings about the film. It, it, it's, it evokes a lot of strong reaction, I would think, because of the themes. Yeah, yeah, I mean the the, the the reactions are strong. I have to say it's um, um, the film where I got most enthusiastic responses in terms of the emotions that were stirred with the audience. And this is sort of across the board because um, it played in, in uh, I, I traveled with the film to, to uh, Taipei and to Tallinn and, and to Valencia. And it's interesting how, you know, people are people. People are the same everywhere in the world, and and their emotional reactions were very similar and and uh, quite heartening. I, I have to say, it's um, yeah, uh, a, a lot of people. Then you know they would write and talk about uh, their personal experiences, mm. how they were reflected in what what happened in the film, which I never thought of. I have to say, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and the uh, first impression, I think, first that is silence, uh, completely silence, which is very par powerful. And then uh, we coming and telling their stories. Uh, well, it, when I was researching for the character in like the motherhood part, I didn't, from an ethical reasons, I didn't spoke with a lot of women because I think that it's very hard subject and. Um, I didn't feel comfortable, let's say, but after the movie, there were lots of women coming to me, telling me uh, about their experiences. And, and I realized that this is kind of a subject that we had, uh, we've been in a way ignorant to, uh, because these women really need compassion and solidarity and, and um, to be at least uh, in a way um, um, comforted. Well, I, you know, I think it's obviously the a, a, a major, maybe the major theme of the film is the strength of women. However, it's not it's not as simplistic as, as that. I mean, it's 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 more challenging and more honest. Um, and even you know, there is, uh, as you mentioned, your your old classmate. There's quite a few very rich male characters as well. Um, Milcho, have you have, have you had feedback from uh, from men as well um, of, of, about the film? Uh, I can say that I, I I found those complexities to be very very um, uh, invigorating as a as a man watching it. Yeah. Yes, I I, I did, and and uh, it's it's funny when it comes to parenthood and and the issues of not being able to have children or, or fighting uh, trying to have children for years and years. Um, it's a difficult one to talk about, uh, and for men, at least in, in in Macedonia, it's even trickier, you know, because there is the, you know, that 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 whole veneer of, of machismo that that you have to, right. or some people feel they, they they need to preserve. So it's 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 a it's a sort of a double bind. But yes, people did come and and, and talk about it, and you know, I, I've been asked whether it's it's a feminist film. And uh, um, how come it's? Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I've I've made a film where all the central characters are women, and then I realized it's not the first time I've I've done it on other films before. Never by design again. You know, I mean, people are people. Um, it just happened so that in this film, the the uh, the leading people happen to be female people, um, and and. I believe that by making that division, 
um, by insisting on 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 race or gender, even if we mean well, we sometimes uh, perpetuate the division. Yeah. So, so I, I believe that you know, I mean, we need to talk about people. We need to talk about characters. We need to talk about human emotions and suffering and ideas, rather than than labeling people. Uh, which is something that that is happening both in society and in film lately. You know the um, the the men in uh, in in Sarah's segment and the middle segment are these large, uh, dark beard, uh, very very burly men. But the but the male character who leaves the most lasting impression is a little boy, a little blonde haired boy. Um, Tell us about casting that character. For those who have seen the film, they'll know that he's that the, the little boy is the focus of the third story. Yeah, um, I mean, first it was writing the character, where I wanted to to find the right the right nuance. Where um, um, I don't want to uh, give away too much, but he is he's very quiet, and they're they're concerned whether he's autistic or not. And ultimately decide that that doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, a child is there to to be loved. Um, so I did a lot of research with with people who work with children, with with orphaned children, with autistic children, etc., to find the right nuance for what the the, the character is in the film. And then, uh, yeah, the casting, um, the the. the the casting was tough. I mean, it's it's really tough working with children, and uh, we we saw a lot of kids, and um, it was just that uh, uh, Kira was was so much just like so much better than everybody else. It wasn't even a question. It's a it's a tough part because he he doesn't he doesn't talk until the end. But then you need to see things. You cannot just march through the scenes and. And do the uh, what is what, what was it the Pudovkin experiment where the audience tries to to project things on his face? No, I mean there there needs to be performance underneath the surface and underneath the the silence. So yeah, we saw a lot of children uh, when 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 we saw Kira. He was he was Kira. So uh, he was he was he was very very simple in the end. Um, and then the uh, working on set. Um, there was uh, Yane who helped um, work specifically with 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 the little actor uh, who made it, who made the performance. Really, it was good. Yeah. Can we talk about the title? I mean, it, you know, the, it does share a title with a 1980s uh, Ron Howard fantasy yeah. film. Um, however, it's it's uh, very different, obviously. And we do see willow trees, um, especially in um, Sarah's segment. Uh, I don't, is, it, is, it, is it an exact translation? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's an exact translation, and it's actually uh, it's uh, the, the the full weeping willow is also Jean uh, Navarro in in Macedonian. So it would be um, would be a, a, a exact full translation. It's about a, a tree that's that's a little strange. You know, most most trees the branches go up. Here the branches go down. And that's probably why it's it's seen as sad or, or, or weeping, but it's really strong. Uh, it it doesn't break, and the, the branches go back down towards the root and, and 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 the roots, and they sort of complete a circle, a circle of life, which is basically what the film is about. It's about this circle of life. I did want to um, before we end also ask um, for for those. Uh, who have seen the film, and and as I mentioned, there are no um, there are no real obvious uh, connections. However, are there little Easter eggs in terms? I thought that is do 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 two characters share a name in the in the first segment and in the third? Yeah, yeah. There's there's a Kuzman. Uh, that's the the boy who. Uh, the son of Sarah's character in, in part one, and then there's Kuzmanovsky, which would be then the last name derived from the first name. Um, and theoretically, you could say that's the the great 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 grandson, yeah. even though 
uh, that's not how last names worked in Macedonia for for a, a long time, for a longer period. So, but but it's it's a little a little tip of the hat. Um, and there are other actually um, several several little inside jokes, basically. But they're they're also uh, even though they're 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 tiny, they're minuscule. They're important in making connections between things and saying that we're all connected and the times are connected and the places are connected. So um, ultimately they become little echoes and little rhymes and little contrasts. Sarah, uh, can you tell us about your first experience? You mentioned it earlier, but of, of watching the film and because you're so intimately involved in it, mm -hmm. so, you know, sensing those, those little, those, those connections that you didn't even know within the script. Yes, well, um, watching the film for the first time uh, was, um, it's never good for, I think, for me, <laughs> because, um, uh, because I just get connected, I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, nervous about it, and I literally, maybe I don't even understand the, the, um, the story even being part of it, but uh, after several times I'm watching it, and after all the impressions went down, I, I think that, um, I mean, this just this movie is the the most beautiful thing about the movie. Movie is that um, it has um, how can I say that um, it has beautifully emotional story and unpretentiously told, and it's a movie that uh, all people can identify with. So that's what I love about the movie. Wonderful. Um, I think we I think we should end there with that with that wonderful sentiment. Uh, and I'm excited for people to to experience this this film. And, and uh, even though we've been talking about it, I hope people can go in um, as much as possible, knowing knowing less, so that the uh, the the turns in the narrative come um, unexpectedly. Uh, right. Ultimately, it's it's really about the emotion. It's, it's yeah. how you feel. You know. I mean. When, when we see a film and we talk to friends, we, we say, you know, I like this film. We don't say, I understood this film. Of course, it shouldn't be confusing, but that's not the most important thing. And, and, and I think that, uh, you know, art, art is about emotions. And I hope we've achieved that in this film. Murdo, before we go, I, I was wondering if you could just share a quick anecdote that I heard you tell somewhere else. Um, about going through customs uh, and having, I guess, having your passport looked at, and the officer asked you, "What do you do for a living?" You said, "Oh, I'm a filmmaker." He said, "Can you tell me um, some of the films that you made?" And you know, not knowing you know, that, that that he would realize, and and what happened there. Well, he was at, at the. Um, um, it was in Toronto, but it was the the American passport control. So because they. You, you get your passports checked, so they, I guess it, uh, JFK wouldn't be as crowded as, as it is. So anyway, he was, he was an American official in Toronto. Uh, why were you in Toronto? I said, I went to a festival. He says, what do you do? I'm a, I'm a film director. Oh, what have you made? I'm like, no, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have heard of it. You wouldn't know it. Uh, and he says, try me. So I said, before the rain. And he goes, oh. Macedonia calling, which was a line from the film. So he had seen the film, he had remembered the line. I was I was flabbergasted. He was he was he was beautiful. I mean that's like part of the beauty of, of, of making art. And there was there was an act too to that story. Then I give him my passport, he swipes it through, he looks at the screen, and he says, Oh, you've directed the wire. I like that show. <laughs> 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 that was so I guess that information came up when you swiped my passport. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and Sarah, I'm sure you'll be having lots of those experiences yourself uh, once we're all able to travel again very soon. Um, yeah. We hope. Um, yes, yes, I hope too. Thank you both uh, for being here. Congratulations on this on this movie, Willow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. It was great to have you all. 
Be sure to take advantage of our free trial to RAP Pro and be the first to know about upcoming RAP screenings and events. You can also check back on our screening page, screenings.therap.com. Thank you.